Uh, well, I really, uh, yeah, that's tough. Um, you know, I seem to, to do really well on the short track, so I kind of like the close proximity, you know, break, cornering, kind of rubbing, donuts on the doors type of racing. But uh, I also really enjoy the, the mile-and-a-half type racetracks. And then, of course, I won at kind of a hybrid. I won at Dover. Um, so Dover is always a, a really special place in my in my heart because of that, you know, winning in the Camping World Truck Series in 2009. Um, and, and I think it's my favorite track because of that. But, you know, I kind of – I guess I don't have just one style of track that I really, really love. I just kind of like a lot of different racetracks. Does that all come because of your sprint car days? You like the close, tight racing? Uh, no, I just kind of – I don't know. Um, you know, I just – I seem to have a better knack for that. It seems to be maybe where more of my experience is, you know, with – super late models and Hooters Pro Cup and the stuff that I started doing when I moved to North Carolina on asphalt. Um, or, I, you know, I just seem to adapt to it a little better. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know. I just do better at those type of racetracks, so I like them because of that. As you uh, make your plans through the, your career here with Joe Gibbs Racing, um, what is – how do they map it out for you? Do they talk to you much about the progression from here, or is it pretty much, hey, let's worry about today, and we'll talk about the future down the road? Yeah, right now it's just kind of about worrying about the present, and then, uh, you know, hopefully the future will sort itself out with, uh, with you know, having good success in what we're doing right now. And as you uh, look at G Joe Gibbs Racing, do you get much help from the guys above, or are you pretty much – on your own with where you are with your team? Uh, no, we get a lot of help. We get a lot of help from the cup shop, and I personally get a lot of help from Joey and Kyle and Denny when he comes down and runs in the Nationwide Series. Uh, and that's a tremendous benefit to me, to have all that data, to have all that knowledge, to have all that resources, and then to have people that have been there, done that, and people that are not too much older than myself, you know, that know what I'm going through and can help me kind of make the transition has been tremendously helpful to me. And I think it's going to cause me to just accelerate my learning curve and get so much more out of this year and have so much more success. Matt out of Atlanta would like to know, what is the talk in the garage about cup drivers not being able to run for the nationwide championship? Do you like that idea? Well, personally, being a nationwide only guy and being one of the ones that's still able to run for a championship in the only series I'm competing in, I like it. You know, I have no reason to hate it because it just kind of increases my chances of uh, being able to be a champion in the in the series, but I don't know. I don't know how cup drivers feel about it. I don't really, I haven't really asked around and gotten the pulse of the garage to see what other people think, but personally, I'm a fan. I like it. I hope that it brings uh, some more attention to the nationwide, you know, only guys, and I think that it helps the nationwide insurance series kind of get its own identity a little bit away from the cup series. It's just like kind of a, a cup race on Saturday. Ryan Scott joining us on our nationwide spotlight live chat here today on nascar.com if you have a question feel free to email it right on into us at nascar.com just like boots and racing dash 11 did brian how does it feel having fans stay with you from your transition from trucks to braun and now over to jgr well boots and racing is another big fan of mine just like lady tracy um it's great you know i i can't think of any sport where the fans get as involved as they do in nascar and i I tell you, that's been a real treat for me coming through the ranks to see, you know, the fans that I've accumulated along the way and the fans that are, are diehard Brian Scott fans that have stuck with me and continue to stick with me and continue to be huge supporters of mine. You know, they, they, they kind of know a lot, of, uh, a lot of different aspects of my life, and, you know, they're always really encouraging after a bad week, and they're always seem just as excited as I am after a good week, and that's, uh, that's something really cool and really special to me and um, something that I'll cherish for a long, long time. Well, it looks like you stand a pretty good shot at winning uh, Most Popular Driver Award then if your fan base follows you everywhere you go and uh, votes for you like this. This is pretty good. Do you know Scorsese 1450? Do I know Stacey 1450? Scorsese 1450. Is that one of your fans too? Oh, well, I think it, it must be, but I'm, I can't think off the top of my head who it is. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was one you knew uh, very well or not. They were kind of wondering, you know, Brian, what is it like working with Joe Gibbs Racing? And we've kind of talked about that a little bit, but maybe you can expand on that a little bit better. What's the best perk to working with Joe Gibbs Racing? 
I think that the best part with, uh, you know, at for uh, with working for Joe Gibbs Racing um, is just being involved with a good group of people, you know, from everybody in the shop to Joe and J.D. Gibbs. Um, they're great guys, uh, you know, both both in business and, pers- and, you know, in their personal life. And they've really helped me develop along the way in both aspects, both in my racing and in who I am off the racetrack. And that's something that's really neat to be a part of, to be a part of, you know, people that care about the whole aspect of life and not just what you're doing on the racetrack. It's pretty cool. I think it helps make me a better entire person. Um, you know, and it's just, it, it's, a, it's a great organization, you know, from the top down, how they run things, how they do things. Um, how they conduct themselves, you know, the fact that morals and reputation is important to them. You know, that's a neat thing to be a part of. It's a neat thing to be a part of something like that and somebody that has such great history and success like Joe Gibbs. Is it a tough thing to live up to? Uh, yeah, you know, there's a Their lot of standards? pressure. There, there is a lot of pressure to perform over there, especially with all the success that they've had recently with almost running the Spring Cup title last year to winning the nationwide title the last three years, whether it was owner points or drivers. Uh, you know, they, they do. They expect to win races. They expect to run strong, and they expect that out of me. Um, so there's pressure on that aspect, but as far as overwhelming pressure or stress or anything like that, it's not so much. You know, I I can take it. I want that type of pressure. You know, I want to know that the – that everything's going to be at my disposal to be able to win races and, you know, put it on me to go out there and do it. Shoal Creek would like to know, Brian, do you race on the simulators like many of the other drivers? Uh, you know, I don't get on it as much as others, but I, I do kind of dabble in them a little bit here and there, especially if it's a place that if it's a racetrack or something that I haven't been to a lot um, or I've never been to. I like to get on there and, you know, get, get myself – acclimated and familiar with the racetrack yes do you play video games in general are you a gran turismo guy or are you a madden guy what do you do oh yeah i play video games i play i play gran turismo a little bit you know i play some nascar racing games you know nascar uh i remember playing nascar back in like nascar 06 and you know every year since uh i also play kind of like you know call of duty blackhawk and some of those and you know it's a fun thing to do to kind of take your mind off of uh off of racing to actually play games different than racing games. So when you played the NASCAR 06 game, which driver were you? Um, you know, I, I was probably Tony Stewart. You know, just from <laughs> the open wheel background and stuff. And, you know, I was yeah. I like Tony Stewart and I like Jeff Gordon and I like Jimmy Johnson and a lot of those guys. Absolutely. Rich Bohr would like to know, if you can win in 2011 – what track do you think your best chance would be to get that victory? Oh, man. I personally think that I have a good chance of winning at any racetrack we go to just uh, because of the team I'm with. You know, they've won at all types of racetracks. They have the capabilities of being really good at every racetrack we go to. And, uh, you know, I think that there's a lot of racetracks that I could, you know, pull the upset and, and win at. Um, and that, that's that's a pretty neat feeling to have week in and week out to be able to go to the racetrack and know that you have a chance of winning well brian the way you're running right now in a ninth place finish at phoenix this past week i'm not so sure that victory would be an upset but i think there's probably quite a few of those in your future here's our last question for today burning rubber wants to know who was your idol in racing when you were growing up as a kid uh, well I, I have a couple um obviously growing up in dirt racing I always thought that, okay, you know, the pinnacle of my racing career would be if I could get to the world of outlaws. And obviously the world of outlaws has been long time dominated by Steve Kinzer. So I, I just, you know, I kind of worshipped him. I wanted to be like him. I wanted to have the success that he had in the dirt days. And then when I made the transition to asphalt and started looking at NASCAR and I knew that NASCAR was going to be my path, you know, I looked at Dale Earnhardt, even though he was kind of, he was past, you know, since I came in in basically 2006, but I looked at him and I said, you know, who could be any better than him to emulate? Somebody so loved by the fans and so loved and feared by their competitors and respected. You know, I said, that's got to be the, that's got to be the ultimate. That's got to be the ultimate if you can achieve that. And then, you know, I, I just, I try to, I guess, go about doing that, which is a, it's obviously a 
huge task to live up to. Yeah, no doubt about it, but you certainly picked two outstanding uh, role models to shoot for, two guys who are really very similar in their driving styles and in their successes and how they went about their business behind the wheel. And, uh, boy, if you can get half of what either one of those two did, you'll have a Hall of Fame career. So congratulations, Brian, on an outstanding run this past weekend in Phoenix, and best of luck to you and the Joe Gibbs guys this coming weekend in Las Vegas. Thanks for being with us today. I appreciate it, Ralph. I just got to thank everybody that emailed their questions in. There was a lot of good questions, and uh, I hope everybody was happy with their answers, and uh, just thank you so much. All right, Brian, we'll check in with you later on this season. Folks, thanks for joining us today here on NASCAR.com. Make sure you join us again next Tuesday about 11 a.m. We'll be live again. And make sure you come on back to NASCARNationwideSeries.com. I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long, everybody.